Hello folks, tonight I'm going after the fish head nebula and I'm doing three minute exposures of HA. I'm going to try and do a full Hubble palette on this one. Hopefully I'll, I'll pick up um, a lot of data in HA, oxygen, and sulfur. Uh, so far I'm just doing HA, but I'll add in the oxygen later. Hopefully I can get to that tonight. Three hours of each. Um, it's a little bit hazy out there right now, and my guiding's not very good. I'm pointing low in the north, or the north, uh, northeast, and let's see what a single frame looks like. So, okay, that's not that's not bad for a single frame for HA. I I don't have a great feeling about oxygen right now because uh, what I've noticed with my SCT. It maybe I'm wrong, but it doesn't seem to pick up oxygen as strongly as my refractor does. I don't know if, if what I'm saying is is really true, but that's what it seems like to me because I I captured the crescent before with that little wide field refractor, and I, I seem to pick up way more oxygen per frame with that thing than I did with my SCT, and I saw that in a couple other examples too. So is, is that possible? Refractor is better at picking up a certain filter than SCT. I don't know, but either way, I'm I'm having a lot of fun with this SCT ever since I got my autofocuser for it. It seems like it has new life now, and it's it's a lot of fun doing that in narrow band. And there's a, a very bright moon out now anyway, so I'm having fun with it, and I'm going to keep using it right now until I run out of targets. So well, I'll stack a few of these and see how it's looking. Um, we're heading into a dither right now, I'm sure. Let's see my guiding. At 0.71, um, that's not too bad. I'll take that, considering it, it's kind of breezy, it's hazy, I'm pointing low. I'm good with that. So, I'll see you guys later. Hey, I am back again, and you can see as the night goes on, just to show you, it, my guiding usually does get better. Um, now it's past midnight and my guiding is about 0.57 tote RMS air. Uh, so th that's usually par for the course. I usually show you my guiding earlier in the day and it never starts off great. It just gets better as the night goes on. So, okay, I'll be back. Hey, so I am stacked the first 43 HA images that came through and at three minutes each. That's a little over two hours so far, so I think <clears throat> I think three hours for HA is going to be enough. Uh, it doesn't look too grainy even right now. It doesn't look bad at all, so I think stopping at three hours will probably be fine for HA. And then I'll just keep my fingers crossed that the other two narrowband filters pick up some data. It looks like a cool object. I. I Oh, if you're wondering the, what the fish head nebula is, um, this is that part that hangs off of the heart nebula. So the heart nebula would actually be somewhere over on the left here, and this is the part that sort of shoots off near the bottom of it. So that's what that is. Okay, I'll <clears throat> it's only about 12.30 now. I think I want to get pretty far. I'm not going to finish today. I'll probably get through three hours of HA in three hours of oxygen if the weather stays good and I'll probably have to finish up sulfur on the next clear night which probably won't be too far away considering the summer we've had. Okay, thanks for listening. See you on day two. Hey, all right, I ended up capturing almost 10 hours of data on the fish head and this is what my, I, I captured over a little over three hours of each filter. This is my sulfur. That's the HA. And that's the oxygen. And this is what I ended up with. That's the fish head. And let's, let's blow this up. I'm not sure why they call it the fish head. I mean, to me, it looks like. A whole fish? Or am I looking at this wrong? This looks like the head, and this is like the whole body. Or is it the other way around? I'm not sure, but I guess it 
or maybe this is a fin, and maybe it's going this way, I don't know. But it was definitely a challenge getting these colors, and I'm going to break into the next segment. I had to take a, a completely different approach to, to get these colors. Uh, my, my way of, of doing the Hubble palette was giving me mostly gold, and I couldn't get any, and I couldn't get blue. I could barely get cyan. I, it just wasn't working for me, so uh, well, I'll show you what I did. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, I'm going to show you how I processed the fish head. It was a completely different approach because my old way of doing things just didn't want to work with this this nebula. I, I couldn't get the colors I want. So I, I have to give a, a big shout out to Sean who left me a message on one of my YouTube videos that uh, the new version of Pixinsight has a utility a script called color mask and it's really useful for doing the hubble palette and i'm going to show you how i did that okay um i'm going to go into well these are my my three filters like si or sulfur oxygen and ha i'm in the basement right now because i installed a new version of pixinsight on my downstairs computer um, I didn't want to just overwrite the version I had on my other computer. I want to make sure this new version is is, is okay first. So uh, all these files right now are nonlinear. Uh, let, let's just combine them right now with LRGB combined. I don't have my process icons on this version yet. So yeah, let's just put... Uh, okay, I've got sulfur in red, HA in green, and oxygen in blue and let's just click the circle here and see what we get come on I'm gonna be going through this video fast because it's after 10 p.m. I'm in the basement it's dark down here I'm afraid of the boogeyman. Okay, let's see. I, I've got my file, and uh, I have to break this into parts because I think my video recorder times out after a few minutes, so I'll be right back. Okay, so now I've got my image, and as I would have expected, it came up greenish-yellow. And by the way, I'm on a 34-inch monitor down here, so I'm not sure how this is going to end up looking on a video. You might have to watch it full screen. I don't know if it's too small or, or what. Okay, so the first thing we got to do is we're going to start creating our mass. And um, what we want to do, and this is new to version uh, Pixinsight 1.8.5. We're going to go into Utilities and click on Color Mask. And it's just what the name implies. It's going to let us create a mass based on color. Now, I just learned how to do this a few hours ago, so I'm, I'm definitely not the foremost expert on this. So... Um, just bear with me here and we'll we all learn together right so the first thing we want to do is we want to fix these stars that came up they look sort of magenta so we're going to create a magenta mask we're going to click on magenta and I, I, I found I like to just um, increase this number here to three so you don't get rough edges in the mask and click OK and this takes a moment to run. One improvement I could see with the color mask is if they, every time you click OK, the script closes and then you have to go back and reopen it, but that's a minor gripe. Almost done. Okay, so here's the mask it created. We'll just drag this over here to our picture. Oops, missed it. Drag it right there. Okay. And let's just, oops, let's just call this one magenta. This is our magenta mask. All right, now we'll shrink it. 
we'll put this over here and let's go to mask and let's just say let's just see the picture now we'll go to intensity transformation the curves transformation that's what we're looking for and we want to click on the saturation button click preview and we're going to bring the saturation all the way down to try and fix those magenta stars and execute it now the instructions I read before it said you can do this twice but I, I think that's overkill okay so that's uh, the first step to fix our magenta stars you can see the stars look a little better up there and probably all the way around the picture so I'll be back in a second to do the next part okay now we want to create another mask let's move this over let's go back into script utilities color mask again now we want to turn down the green just a little bit, so let's create a green mask. I like to go up three on that one. Click OK. Sorry, I, I should have come back, left him come back while this runs. Okay. It's back already. Oh, all right. And we'll call this green mask. And let's drag it over here. It'll replace the mask I currently have. All right, let's go back to our curves transformation. And let's click on green preview. Oops. You want to make sure you're actually updating the image, not the mask. Now we've got the right preview. And let's turn down the green a little bit. Not too much. Just a little. Like that. Execute it. Okay starting to get closer all right two more masks and we'll be finished i'll be right back again okay now let's create a cyan mask let's go into color mask again we'll click cyan Still running. Okay. All right, it's finished. Let's call this one Cyan Mask. Just like that. Let's move that one up here. open up the preview all right now with this one this is where we can get creative so let's go to our blue line here and let's just start dragging this line up a little bit see how we're getting there lots of blue there and we can maybe turn down the green a little bit more how about a little red this is where it's really going to be how you want to play with this. But right now I'm just showing you, look, we've got our blue. You saw my image earlier. There's, that's where the blue came from. Let's execute it. All right. Very close to that earlier image I showed you with my, my final image. Now we got one more mask to create, so I'll be right back. Okay, time for our last mask. And what we want to do is we want to turn this yellowish color to a more gold, more representative of what that Hubble palette really looks like. 
So let's go into color mask for the final time. We're going to click yellow. I like to go three. We are in the home stretch. I've got this memorized already on day one because I've gone through it so many times trying to figure out what I like best. And I learned how to do deconvolution really fast because I went through that so many times. I never think I'm going to memorize this stuff, but it, it once you start doing this over and over again, this stuff gets quick. Okay. So, there's our yellow mask. And you could always play around with this in, in the curves. You could make this more bright. You, you could do a lot with these masks. You don't just have to take what this gives you. This is more like a starting point. But we'll just use what it gave us for now. And put it here. And we'll call this one yellow. Not that we're going to have to come back to these, but just so I know. And so these were the four masks I created, and we are on the last one, yellow. And for the yellow mask, what you want to do is you want to use red. And the red will turn that, that yellow to more of a gold. Oops. You want to make sure you're on the picture here. Click the preview. And we're getting more gold. You see that? And we got a little, um, some issues up there. We'll probably just, you could crop that off or work on the background before you even start this process. But let's just click execute. And that's it. That's how I arrived at my picture. Of course, I went through this uh, with, uh, a few iterations and I also did my um, my denoise, I tried to sharpen it a little bit and also played with the brightness, darkness. So I, I did a lot of other stuff, but this was the gist of how I got my colors for the Hubble palette with that, with the fish head. So, and I use this, it was my backup today because the stuff I normally go, the, the process I normally use just wasn't really giving me the colors I liked. My image was coming out mostly just gold. But with this, you, you can ease, see how easily you can arrive at blue or, or some other color, whatever you want. And I couldn't do that with my other process. So that color mass really makes things possible. So I, I hope you found this useful. All right. I'll see you later. And thanks again to Sean for telling me about this. I was completely unaware of it.